What's up YouTube? We're back at it again with the Super Beetle build. Uh, this time we're going to be doing some sheet metal and hopefully finishing off everything that makes this kind of undaliable currently. But, uh, so we're going to get right into it. Unfortunately, I had two nights worth of recording while I installed the rear apron here. So now this is bolted into place. Um, I can show you up under here that it has kind of like our welded in nuts. I can show you guys a little bit later with some better uh, lighting. But unfortunately that footage got deleted. And so where we're at now is I was actually working on our firewall in here. And you can see I have two pieces bent up there, just sitting there. And I have one larger piece bent up right here. And what we're going to be doing is using these to make a frame to basically mount our sheet metal to in the firewall area. And like I said, I had been recording for a while and for whatever reason, the memory card, the data got corrupt. So we're going to jump right into this. Uh, I'm going to show you guys me clicking it in and starting to get a fit for the firewall so that we can get it installed. And if you're not familiar with Clecos, they're actually pretty simple. So how it works, look at this one on the edge here. You see you have this tool that goes with them. And how it works, you see I retract it. So when I push it, it can uh, narrow to go through the hole. And then I let it go, and it basically anchors it tight against the other piece the hole's drilled through. So I'll just use these to kind of mount it along, you can see. Just magnetic, so. And there we have our first piece mounted. It needs to be bent a little bit better because our Harbor Freight brake, unfortunately, is at its extreme with this, but it's actually perfectly fine for what we need. So now I can figure out the main piece to go up and over and the side pieces to mount as well. We'll actually be putting these in here on the sides and trimming them to fit, basically doing the same thing until these fit right on both sides. And then we'll have a mounting face all the way around for the firewall. All right, so now you probably have a better idea what I'm talking about. So you can see the different side pieces that we have now kind of clicked in and my bigger like actual main pan like main side panel. I'm going to put bends on it on this edge and this edge so that it'll be able to I can put like rib nuts in it and have a main piece that goes here and up or I should say up and back, um, that will basically bolt to the flanges that are created by this bend over here, this lining there, same thing on this side and here. And that'll give us something that the main, main firewall right here will come in and out and everything else will be riveted in. So pretty much permanent, but we can always drill the rivets out if we need to, excuse me, if we need to remove it for some reason. So I'm going to add bends to these pieces and kind of get them fit up so they're nice and flush in the corners there. And then after that, I will make the main piece and, uh, you know, just start adding, adding rivets and rivets as we can. I'll basically, I should say, I'll use Clecos for everything until we have it like 95% final. Then we'll take it all out and give it a coat of paint and then we'll put it in permanently with the rivets and the rivet nuts.
Another quick update, you can see now we have these bent up. You can kind of get a better idea what we're going for. Um, I just got to trim them to fit because there's a curve uh, in the inner like corner down there. You'd say it's actually around. So I just got to trim that to get these all to fit nice and snug. And then we'll be all set, which will be really nice. All right, so we got everything fit up here. I'm just gonna drill some more holes so that everything's ready to be riveted so that we can take it out and paint it and be done with it. No new drilling holes after that. The other thing I did do is I bent up our firewall piece. I still need to redo it a little bit more because I didn't get a perfect 90 on the first shot. But overall, pretty happy with it. I will say you guys should learn from me and kind of do as I say and not as I do. Uh, I'm using a Harbor Freight three-in-one brake bender slip roll. Uh, and I am shearing and bending everything outside of the spec of the machine. I think this is all 16 gauge. Pretty sure that only goes up to 18 or 20. Um, so everything has been extremely difficult. The shears haven't been working great. The bending needs to be done multiple times. So I would say, learn from me. Uh, what I could have done if I wasn't being lazy is I could have done like even 18 or 20 gauge sheet metal and rolled it to make it about as stiff as the 16 gauge, but I really just wanted it to be simple because I knew I was gonna add the insulation and other stuff. Um, and this is really rigid as it is. So just take it from me, you know, try to plan ahead and use the sheet metal or the different materials that work with the equipment you have or get equipment for the material you're gonna be using. But either way, uh, I've definitely been making it more difficult for myself trying to bend and cut larger sheet metal than what I have equipment for. With all that being said, we're getting pretty close. So like I said, I'm gonna drill some more holes, then we'll fit in the main panel. And then after that, it'll be painting it and then you know installing our rib nuts and uh, rivets to, to put it in its final location. All right, so here it is. All the holes are screwed or drilled. Uh, we have everything pretty much in place the way we want it. It's real rigid. We'll add uh, the dampening material. The, we got some Thermotech insulation. I'll put a link in the description and I'll show you guys how I put it on. But yeah, I'm really happy with it. So now uh, what we'll end up doing is we will take everything apart, take it out of the car, uh, because of the uh, location of some of the rivets, I'll probably actually rivet some of it together outside of the car and then bring it in to install it. Um, and again, this will be, all these silver ones you see on the top here, these will be screws, so it, this big panel will be removable. All right, so here are all the pieces drilled and now out of the car. So what we'll do is we'll go through everything, we'll deburr it all, we'll clean everything up, make it nice and straight. Uh, and prep it for paint, and then we'll paint it all. Um, it's getting a little cooler. I think it is 64 in the garage, so that still should be fine. Depending on how long it takes us to get this all cleaned up, we may wait until tomorrow to paint it, just so that the paint has the best chance of, of adhering. Um, but either way, like I said, we'll get it painted. We'll get as much of it assembled out of here as we can, and then we'll assemble what we can't, what we won't be able to do outside here. We'll do it in the car. And then obviously, like I said, the main panel will be removable, so we can do that in or out of the car. It won't be a big difference either way.
So here's kind of the finished result in my little mini paint studio. I'm actually really happy. All the pieces came out really good, pretty even coated, nice little flat mat, whatever you want to call it. I think I started with satin and ended with flat, but it's all the same again. But I am really happy with how everything came out. So we'll get it all bolted together, like I said, as much as we can, or riveted together as much as we can out here, and then we'll reinstall it all in the car. All right, so we get everything riveted or riv nut together and I'm really happy the way this is all coming together. It looks pretty good. So the last thing we'll do is we'll put the Thermotech uh, supersonic acoustic mat. It's for sound and for heat protection. So we'll put that on a couple of the pieces just to try to you know cut down any vibrations, any heat transfer into the car. And then from there we'll install it and we'll be done with this. All right, so we got it in there, and I gotta be honest, I think it looks freaking great. A um, couple issues with accessing some of the rivets, so what we'll end up doing is having to take it back out one more time, do a couple things just to get the fitment perfect, and then reinstall it, and we'll be good to go. Uh, I'm really happy with it, uh, so I think that's really more or less it. What I didn't show you guys is I also added some of, some of that uh, Thermotech insulation to this firewall piece as well, and it's like, it's incredible how much of that like tinny sound it took out of it. And once we get the rivets and everything kind of like finally installed, I think it's gonna be really impressive how how it helps with the volume. I mean, obviously I had an open hole, so anything's gonna help with that at this point. But um, I'm expecting a huge improvement even from factory at this, you know, with, with everything we've done now. Um, so I'll show you guys like final, final fitment with probably some like, you know, some beauty shots. And I can quickly show you guys the rear apron and then I'm gonna take it for a spin and then probably call it for this video. And here's the inside of that firewall panel, just because I didn't get a chance to show you guys it before I test fit. I got a little anxious. Um, so everything's pretty much good to go. Uh, so the next thing we'll do, and this will probably be like the last thing as far as the firewall stuff, is we're just going to tape any corners or any gaps that we have just to make sure that it's really well insulated. And then we'll put the intercooler back in and we'll put the firewall on for uh, the time being. And then we'll go take it for a drive and see how it sounds. And like I was saying, unfortunately we've been having a lot of trouble with this memory card lately, but I can show you what we did here. So what you can see if you look closely is we welded nuts on the inside here and here and on these two locations as well. This came as just kind of like an open slot. So we basically just add these welded nuts and now this panel just bolts in with the two bolts on either side for four volts total. Now this can come in and out and we can service anything on the front of the Subaru motor. So with all that, we're, the car is actually looking like a car again. And a pretty good one if I do say so myself. So I think the thing next is, it's a little laid out so it might be hard for you guys to see me. But we're going to take it for another drive just to kind of cap it off. It's been a nice way to kind of end these videos with a little cruise.
record right now, but the drive is going awesome after a couple of hiccups. Just great. Alright, so I'm gonna try to give you guys some turbo noises real quick. As always thank you guys for tuning in that was so much fun the car actually sounds great uh, I don't know if I could get it on the camera but it's making all the turbo choo-choo noises uh, blow off valve is blowing off it sounds great um, so I'll, if I can or if you guys saw I'll try to overlay some of the tune and some of the stuff from mega squirt if I can into the uh, video if not I'll at least throw up here if I got a boost number or if not then I'll kind of show you the almost deposit pressure number that we got to uh, but with all that as always thank you guys for tuning in really appreciate the support uh, if you like what you saw share with your friends we're really trying to grow like you saw in our last video we now have a new truck uh so look forward to content on that for all you ford american guys and for all the import guys you know we're gonna keep working on this of course but let me know what you guys would like to see because at this point it's gonna turn into my daily between the two of these i'm gonna just switch off what i bring to work so let me know if you want to see anything with this um we still have to do the trunk the frunk the spare tire well fix that up uh, we'll kind of finish off the interior and then from there it's probably some suspension and braking upgrades and then it's just enjoying the car for a little while. Uh, and also let me know what you guys want to see on the truck. So with all that, thanks. Like I said, hit the like button, be sure to subscribe and hope to see you again soon.